book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 17. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. First and foremost, I want to give infinite honors and prayers to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Rikaha Kodash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to the archivist that's pushing the truth and sincerity. And Lord willing, this video be edifying, first and foremost, to the whole few elect and to those that cleave to the body. And uh, as you see on the screen here, it says, the aim of the wise is not to secure pleasure, but to avoid pain. Because, hey, one that it wallows in his pleasure, and he have no remembrance of, 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 uh, of his pain, you know, where he had to grind at, where he had to go through that to get set in that state of pleasure. You know, these, these people that, uh, uh, you know, wax to be rich, you know, they, they are looking to be rich at this time, or they have became rich, and they forgot the part when they was poor, man. Cause they didn't dwell in the in the in the pleasures for so long. That's why I say she that uh, dwelling in pleasures is dead while she living. You see, cause what they don't know is those same riches. All right, they chose debt rather than to go through affliction, man. You see, it's like they chose the easy way rather than be afflicted, man, and get it that hard way. You know, but this proverbs prove that real quick. It's Proverbs 21 and 17. It says, he that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. You see? Because why? He would rather choose his affliction, okay, than the what? Than the, uh, than the, uh, basically have those pleasures and pain, man. Because no one, nobody wants pleasure and pain. You see? It's either... The one or the other. Okay. And on this side. Okay. The Lord uh, deals with those people. That's, those men as of a broken and a contrite spirit. He's in a house of mourning. And affliction. Because. Hey. That's where the truth lie at man. Alright. That's where your strength lie at. You see. This Proverbs 14 and 13. It says. Even in laughter. The heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. You see, and the end of that mirth is heaviness, man. So you got to secure, uh, you got to not be trying to secure pleasure, but trying to avoid pain. Because, hey, everybody that's living in their the pleasures right now, hey, the Lord going to bust them up. You see? And, of course, you know, that that don't go to, hey, they, you know, they have, may have some men of the Lord that's not in, uh, have that furnace of affliction as other men, I'm going to be fair, you know, but when I'm really, you know, mainly speaking about when I say that, those people that be rich on this side, because it's easier for a, 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 a camera to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to make it in the kingdom of heaven, you see? So, you know, that's what I mean by that, you know? This is on um, Sirach chapter 38, verse 18. It says, for of heaviness come in debt. Now, I just read in Proverbs 14 and, and 33. I mean, 14 and 13, it says, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that mirth is heaviness. Okay, so the end of pleasure is heaviness. You see? It says, for of heaviness come in debt. Sirach 38 and 18. And the heaviness of the heart breaketh the strength. You see? So when they do come down off that high mountain or that high, they, they drop real low. It'd be a hard fall. You see? Because they forgot that pain, all right? That going through that pain, what it took, you know, what it take, hey, because a hey, pain strengthens you. You see? But pleasure weakens you. You see? And a lot of men in these scriptures died because of their pleasures. They went after their pleasures. You see, Samson, you see, you know, he dealt with the other nation's women in his pleasure. And what? It brought him pain. You see? So, hey, opposites of track, right? It says, <clears throat> 19, in affliction, also sorrow remaining. As long as you be sorrow, you're going to be able to reflect on those things which not going to get you in a web, in a spider web of being caught up on what? 
those things that are cheerful to the heart. Because with a, cheer, a, 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 a gift blinded the heart. You see? It blinds the heart. And it then it what? It perverts your, uh, it, it perverts your sight on the way you see things and view things. That's why when people say, oh, if I get money, I ain't going to change. You're a damn lie. And why are you about to live in your pleasures now? Because everybody gravitate to pleasures. You just want, if you just get your pleasures or the things that you desire throughout your entire life, you're not going to have any uh, limitations or restrictions to yourself. All right. There, you know, basically you'll go to the top of the mountain, you know, uh, after your pleasures. You know, once you had them, once you dive in them and have them daily and all the time, all right, you're going to desire them in life. So once they're taken from you, you're going to do anything to get it, get it back. You see? It says uh, 20, take no heaviness to the heart, drive it away and remember the last end. It says, forget it not, for there is no turning again. Thou shalt not do him good, but hurt thyself. You see? Yeah, hey. So pleasure can be a, a self-inflicting wound. Okay? Now, there's, you know, the good things in pleasures, which the Lord say that he's going to get. Matter of fact, this is song. All right? There's a good side of pleasure. And then it's that what? That detrimental side of pleasures, right? This is Psalms. Sixteen and eleven, it says, "Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy." You see, this that fullness of joy. This is that uh, godly pleasure. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You see, there are pleasures forevermore at the right hand of our power. Well, what we must do first, what? Work. We must what? Go through that pain, man. All right? It's a balance. The Lord is a balanced power. So if he's bringing his men through pain to give them all the pleasures that they desire, how much more should you be ready to willing to take on that pain? You know, head up. Like, if this is what I got to do to get to that everlasting pleasure, all right, that it speaks about, to get the, to the pleasures ever more than, man, you should have your shoes tied up first on, you know, they ask who won't go first, your hands should be up, man. You know, you should be already lining up like, you know, what I got to run into, what I got to do, you know, ready to do it. You see, eager to do it. All right. Then, that, then there's the, that pleasure. All right. That, that, that's, that's hurtful. Then it's that it's that pleasure that that is hurtful. You see, I want I want to finish in that Lamentation three and seventeen. I'm gonna go back to that Lord willing. You see, but this is all. Uh, Bear with me. Thirteen. This Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. And it reads. Uh, chapter 7 verse 14. Come back to the two, uh, 2 verse 1. It says in the day of prosperity be joyful. But in the day of adversity consider. You see. So A. Hey, it says, God also had set the one over against the other to the end that that man should find nothing after him. So there's a medium there. All right. Meaning what? The end of one is the end of the other. The beginning of one is the end of the other. The end of one is the beginning of the other. Okay. So that's a what? That's a ring. All right. That's a medium. Hey, it says, be joyful. Live it up. You know, as Job lived in his joy, you know, but in a day of adversity, he still considered that the Lord gave it to him. You see? He said, what? Should I have all good and no evil? You see? So Job's affliction made him what? Also remember his pleasure. All right? Remember those things that was pleasing unto him because you be that much more what? Remorseful for it, man. 
in your affliction, man. You see? This 15, all things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, yup, in his affliction. And there is a wicked man that prolonged his life and his wickedness. You see? So, and if you prolong your life and your wickedness, you're going to dwell carelessly because you're going to believe that there's no judgment for your wickedness, man. That's why I say, um, though um, judgment is not executed speedily, it is fully set in the heart of the men to do evil because they, guess what? They pleasure have, have became their what? Their uh, psyche, man. All right. They believe in what? I'm, I'm untouchable, man. You know, but in your affliction, you consider all things. What if I was rich? What if I did have this? You know, I remember from when I was poor because, hey, that's just that's that's symbolic to us. You know, we're going to remember these hard times that we went through and that way we're going to enjoy the riches and the pleasures forevermore that much more greater. So we're going to protect it that much more to where we don't go to the state where we be poor again, man, or afflicted. You see? This Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Verse 1, it says, I said in my heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. Because th the reason why the pleasures <clears throat> is vanity over here, you get millions of dollars, you know, you get mansions, cars, clothes, because all that's going to perish. Now, when you get pleasure that comes with immortality and everlasting life, now you got that token of gratitude. You'll have that great gracious token of gratitude upon those things that you uh, 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 have or have received. You see, that's why the Lord said, look, I'm going to give this to y'all in the kingdom of heaven. It would do y'all no good over here. It'll just blind your heart and your eyes, man, unto me over here. All right. It'll practically kill you. Pleasure in America kills you, man. All right. You know, we, I'm going to cut it straight. You see, it says, Okay, I can leave it right there. I won't be too long. Got a few precepts I won't cover. All right, this is uh, this is Isaiah chapter twenty one, verse four. It says, "My heart panted, fearfulness affrighted me. The night of my pleasure." Had he turned into fear unto me. So your pleasure could turn into fear and pain overnight, man. Overnight. You know, I got to get the famous one. Let's get it, man. All right. This is Sirach 11, verse 25. And it reads, In the day of prosperity, there's a forgetfulness of affliction. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like a wipeout, you know. Those, you know, you have the little rappers, you know, most of our rappers and our people that are famous today, they came from the struggling in the slums, our people too. Some of them might have had an easier pad, you know, a silver spoon pad, but the mass majority of our people that you see that same dance, act and play football, they come from out the gutter, all right, in the insignificant places, the hood, okay? And it says, and in the day of affliction, there was no more remembrance of prosperity, and they, they, they didn't forgot what it is to be poor again, man. You know, that's why when they come to being poor, they get on what? All kind of drugs, all right? Get all, all, all bugged out out of their mind, all right? They do what? They, 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 they beating their women, all right? They whipping the shit out of their children because what? The bugness done crept in, man. You see? They done went that far away or that far off. It says, for it is an easy thing unto the Lord in a day of debt to reward a man according to his ways. The affliction of an hour make it a man forget pleasure of one hour. And if he would he been living in pleasure for 40 years, if for one hour you take all those pleasures away, in that one hour, he not gonna remember that pleasure no more. In one hour from 40 years. And in his end, his deeds shall be discovered. All right? Those things that he what? That he put his put his heart into. Okay.
that's you know that's that's you know that's a bad that's a bad combination. All right. This is a. Uh, Let's see. This is Psalms seventy-three and twelve. I'm gonna get Job twenty-one and one. I mean twenty-one and twenty-one. Because don't be like the wicked man. All right. It says, "For what pleasure had he in his house after him when the number of his months is cut off in the midst?" So if you billing. All right, if you have a house, you created a house of pleasure. And when you cut off in the midst of it, you know, what was the what was the whole labor there for? All right? And that's the what? That's 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 go to the wicked cuz his house is about to be cut off in the midst of him, all right? This Psalm 73 because of his pleasure. In 12, it says, "Behold, these are the ungodly Who prosper in the world, they increase in riches. You see? So the the the, the ungodly in the world, they prosper in the world, they increase in riches. Alright? But the that pressure of that pleasure to keep that pleasure, they're gonna sell their soul while they live. You see? So it's pressure that comes with pleasure. Alright? You see? This is Sirach. 19 and 5. It says, Whoso take a pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned. You see? You see? So when you take pleasure in wickedness, you're going to be condemned. All right? Getting going about things to receive in what? The wrong way. Okay? Selling your soul out. But he that resisted pleasures crowned his life. And that's what we do over here, man. All right, we resist the pleasures. All right, so we can have a crown at the end of our lives. You see, hey, hey we regular men, you don't think we want pleasure? You know, we don't want five, ten women taking us to shower and feeding us grapes. Hey, hey, all that is for the kingdom of heaven. There's a time to embrace that. Okay, right now is not that time. It's a time of hate, it's a time of walk, it's a time of you know, killing. It's not a time of pleasure, peace. All right, it's a time of pain. This is the, the hour and the day that we live in it. Okay? This is uh Sirach 18 and uh 32. It says, Take no not pleasure and much take not pleasure and much good cheer. Neither be tied to the expense thereof. Because there's an expense for pleasure, man. That's why the aim of the wise is not to secure pleasure. All right, because you hey, it's expendable on this side. All right, but in the kingdom of heaven, it's gonna be heavenly. And oh boy, you know, it's gonna be real heavenly in the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay, and that's what we, you know, that's what we're doing it for. Okay, <clears throat> this is Sarai 37 and 27, my son. Prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. Pleasures is evil for you over here, Jake. Okay? And I, listen, I don't say that everything that you get pleasure in, all right, but any overindulging in it is not, is not beneficial to your walk and it's true. Overindulging in women and money and working, all right, and your children and love, all right, all those pleasures Hey, they they gonna lead to the grave, man. And there's no seeking of dantities in the grave, which dantities are pleasures. You see, once you're in that in that grave or in that pit, and remember, we're in the prison house, we're in the pit or the grave. So we gotta what? We gotta watch what we take pleasure in. You know, we gotta have small pockets of pleasures, pleasure, and then pop out of that shit. All right, because it could what? It could pull you back into the world. It says, for all things are not profitable. Profitable for all men, neither had every soul pleasure in everything. You see? So hey, we gotta we we gotta watch how we own how we desire on this side, which is a you know desires and pleasures 
are synonymous with one another. All right, we got to watch our desires. We got to keep our desires in check. You see, <clears throat> this on Sirach 9 and 12, it says, delight not in a thing that the ungodly have pleasure in, and they have pleasure in what? All those things that's going to condemn them. But remember, they shall not go and punish until they grave. So whether they have a uh, pleasure over here, for all our people that have pleasure over here, guess what? They they gonna they gonna go down to the grave, man. All right. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. You see. And as men of the Lord, all right, as um as uh being planted on that good ground, okay, we we are, we know the order in which we supposed to um conduct ourselves. You see, this Luke eight and fourteen. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. All right. So you can't come to your complete self, though yet you, you know, you may have the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. All right. You can't, you can't bear good fruit. All right. You can't multiply. You can't become abundant. All right. You know, you can't live and be fruitful and no wise because you only going to have your stock in the riches and cares of this world and the pleasures of these of this world, man. All right. But suffering, going through that pain. Matter of fact, 15, but that on the good ground are they, which are the elect men, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, kept it and bring forth food with patience through that long suffering. All right, through that furnace, what? Of affliction, man. You know, not selling out. All right? Like our forefather, Mo um, Moses, man. I'm going to get it. In Hebrews, he ain't sell out. You see how that sell out spirit. Hebrews 11 and 25. It says, choosing rather to suffer affliction. I'm going to read 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years... Refuse to be called a son of the Pharaoh's daughter. So, yeah, because when you call that, that's a high office of place, man. All right? Meaning you're amongst the royalty, the wealthy. All right? But though, look, that wasn't our people. All right? But look what he did. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see? Because it's temporary. Pleasures here is seasonal. All right? That's not where you don't get all caught up. And grabbing, a, you know, the Lord throw you a bone and a blessing. Hey, you know, we, we continue to push on and move on, man. You know? You know, we even count, we count our blessings, man. But we understand as well, you know, we ought to be focused on those things which are going to be profitable to our own salvation more than anything else, man. All right? But this back in Lamentation 3 and 17 that I started with. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from Yahweh. So when you forget prosperity, all right, and you go into that dark place of, you know, the Lord, you know, chastising you, making you suffer, all right? <clears throat> Don't get in this, in that, uh, that, that um, rebellious state, because that's when one rebels against his maker, you see? It says, and I say, my strength and my hope is perished from Yahweh, remembering mine affliction and my misery, my hell, the wormwood and the gall, my soul had them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. You see? So the aim of the wise is to not secure pleasure, but to avoid pain. And that's going to have you what? It's going to humble you, man, and bring forth that humility. All right? It says, this I recall to mine Therefore, have I hope, man. You see? So with that, man, you know, I hope it was edifying. Until the next time, I want to say Shalom.